Picture this, a Formula One car, but it's got six wheels. Six wheels. Yeah, six. Not like that Tyrell, you know, the one with four in the front. Right, right. This one, it had four in the back, the Williams FW Aero 8B, the what could have been car, tons of potential, never even started a race. Hmm. Interesting. So uh, that's what we're diving into today, why this radical design never, well, got off the ground. We're going to dig into the FWRO 8B, its development, all that. Sounds fascinating. All right, let's break down this whole six-wheeled thing. W why would Williams even go for that? It all boils down to traction and downforce pushing those limits. Two extra wheels at the back meant more contact, more grip. Okay, so like more rubber on the road, more grip. Exactly. Yeah. They thought it could even cut down on drag because they could have a slimmer front end. And our source even mentioned getting the same, maybe even bigger contact patch, but with a smaller front end, wild. Right. Imagine the engineering headache of fitting four wheels where two usually go. Yeah. And get this, all this was happening just as F1 was going turbo crazy. Early 80s, the turbo revolution, Renault was all in, then Ferrari in 81. So where did Williams fit in with their six-wheeled experiment while everyone else was going turbo? Makes you wonder if this was their way to get ahead without the cost of building a whole turbo engine from scratch. And this is F1. Even a tiny edge is a big deal. Like finding a shortcut in a race where everyone's already pushing to the max. Exactly. But what was it like to actually drive this thing? We've got a glimpse from Jonathan Palmer. He actually got behind the wheel, right? Yeah, he tested the FW Aero 8B. Hmm. Said he couldn't really tell there were four wheels at the back. Whoa, can you imagine wrestling that thing around a track? Four wheels scrabbling for grip where you'd normally feel two. It really makes you think about the potential, though. If it felt that stable, that planted, even with the extra wheels, it sounds like they were onto something special. I'd love to know more about what Palmer felt, especially in the corners. For sure. Sadly, that one quote is all we've got. But even with breakthroughs, there's always a hitch. Patrick Head, he was one of the brains behind the FW08B, called it bloody heavy. And every racing fan knows weight is the enemy. Every gram matters in F1. Less weight equals faster acceleration, later braking, quicker cornering, all of it. It's a balancing act, pushing for innovation while dealing with the downsides. More wheels, more grip, but at what cost? And before they could really fine tune it, the FIA stepped in. Even before the testing was done, there were already whispers about a ban. And in 83, boom. The FIA, they're the rule makers. They change the rules. Max four wheels. Just like that. Six wheel dream over. That's rough. Felt like I had so much potential. Why the FIA do that? Safety. It was new territory, a six wheeled car. And you can get why the FIA would be cautious. But this is F1. There's always politics. Ooh, okay. Now it's getting juicy. What else was going on? It's still debated today, even now. Were other teams scared because it might shake things up too much? Was it about keeping costs down, stopping teams from going down these expensive rabbit holes? We may never know the whole story. A real F1 mystery makes you wonder, what if they'd let the FWAAB race reach its full potential? We'll never know how it would have stacked up against the regular cars. It highlights this crucial thing about motorsports. It lives on innovation, but it's also got these rules, these limits. Sometimes it's needed, of course, for safety and all. Mm. But it makes you think, are we stifling creativity? That's a question we face even outside of racing. What's the right balance? How do we push the boundaries without going too far? It's something to think about. So what do you think? Could the FWA8B have been a game changer? Or was it doomed from the start? Let us know.